It is uh, Sunday, January 8th. My uh, many years long uh, friend and former uh, art studio uh, colleague, uh, Cease Cooney Wicket, is uh, visiting, seeing the uh, Orthodox Jew uh, under barbed wire, Olkush, Poland, 1940, for the first time. And, um, and, uh, what do you what do you think? You you, uh, you mentioned something about the uh, where the barbed wire is that I brought back from the uh, British Army uh, anti-Nazi tank. Uh. Yes, I I think that that's a really interesting and nice part of this piece, as you did with your other mosaics. You've incorporated physical things that you picked up in Europe at the site of uh, historical sites that had to do with the Holocaust. You've incorporated them into your pieces in the mosaics. This I find very very sort of sweet and interesting. It reminds me as a Catholic of the reliquaries that have relics of saints. And, what, you know, what are reliquaries? Reliquaries, uh, they have them in the churches and what they generally are is a container that has something uh, from a saint. Perhaps it has um, a bone or a fragment of cloth that they mm -hmm. wore, um, uh, something like that, or in really gruesome sort of cases like when I was in Italy as a child, we went to the church in Siena where we saw the preserved head of St. Catherine of Siena oh, in a reliquary. My gosh. That's huh. a relic. Huh. However, there's many things that are relics that are not bones and stuff. They mm -hmm. are things that are simply have significance. And mm. you picked up these pieces of barbed wire. Remind us where. Uh, a town called Newboro in northeast Scotland, about 10 miles north of Aberdeen. And they are specific to World War II because... Yeah, because the British Army had built these anti tank anti-Nazi fortifications along the beach there. So there's all these yeah. con uh, kind of concrete bunkers and anti-tank things there. Yeah. And fortifications that have all these bits of uh, rusting metal, barbed wire I picked up, which pretty much fell apart after I got back here. Then had to try to figure out how to insert it into the mosaic. I brought it back intentionally because I knew I'd be working on the mosaic this summer. This metal rod here also uh, from the anti uh, anti tank uh, anti-Nazi fortifications that the British Army built there, you know, same time period, 1941. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how it ended up. And uh, The fact it that it's under glass mm -hmm. and it's been preserved under glass in mm -hmm. this piece, even though someone else might have looked at that and just so oh, it's just garbage, it's just some rusted pieces of metal. Mm -hmm. That adds a special quality to it, the fact that you've got it preserved so um, carefully under glass, and that's what I was talking about when I said it reminds me of a reliquary. It gives uh, importance and specialness mm -hmm. to this piece by incorporating it into your larger piece to um, for you to keep these tiny pieces and fragments of what is basically history. The fact that they were touched and handled by someone during that time period and, and put there and left for, you know, these 70-some years, um, I think it makes a... It, it it, it's special that you have put these things into the work, and I always like all your work anyway. I think that it's um, very beautiful. The fact that it's socially significant, I think, is important. I don't think there's enough art these days that is made that has social relevance, and um, sometimes there's an attitude on the part of the art world to say that any type of art that has a um, social message doesn't, that it's some kind of second-rate art, but I, of course, feel differently. I think your work is always very beautiful, and this piece is as successful as the last couple pieces that you did. It's very beautiful. Can I stop talking now? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Cease. That was great. You offered a very unique perspective, especially on that reliquary um, stuff, which I was unfamiliar with.